Hey, this is Pastor Blair with Tactical Pulpit. It's been a while. Um, just getting busy with life, you know. So, uh, school year's almost done, summer break's almost here, and I'm just going to hit the door running. So, I'm excited about that. I am actually playing hooky this morning, and um, I thought what I was going to do is, is put together a little uh, axe to carry around in my truck. Now, I've got more axes than any human being should have, but each one of them to me is uh, means something as they should, but maybe even means too much. Like I, I put together a uh, like a working axe, but then it's got some sentimental value to me and I want to be careful of it. So today I've got a, a single bit axe here that I bought, doesn't have any sentimental value to me whatsoever. And as far as I know, it doesn't have a a brand name on it. So I'm going to put it together, fix it up, get it fixed up, and uh, just see where see what I can put together here. So uh, join me for that. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is, is to drill out the old handle that's been uh, broken off, hanging out uh, just uh, about a half an inch down here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this out and try to knock it out. All right, there's that. So, and then what I want to do is I want to check the eye here. A lot of times they'll crack out here, or one of the sad uh, fates of a lot of these single bit axes is back in the day um, when the handle broke off, they'd use them as a, a splitting wedge, pounding on them with them all. And so what'll happen there is that eye will get widened out. A lot of times you'll have cracks here. Sometimes you'll have cracks right down the side. This looks pretty good. No cracks top or bottom. So, um, another thing that I actually like about this, a lot of my other axes have uh, have the maker's name stamped in them. And, and that, you know, to me that means something. I look at that. This one doesn't appear to have writing. And like I said, I'm making this a truck axe, and it's something that I can be fairly certain is going to get beat up. And I hate to do that to a... Uh, I hate to do that to any axe. I mean, I'm not intentionally gonna, going to damage it, but um, to not... At the same time, I don't want to be afraid to use it. So, I'm going to take a wire wheel to this, and just to uh, get a little deeper into it and evaluate the condition... And, if there is a mark on it. I thought maybe looking through that rust I could see something, but it doesn't look like it. And you know, most of the time I, it bums me out, but for this particular axe and its use, I'm going to be glad. <laughs> okay, now uh, let's take a little bit closer look at it here <clears throat> I don't see anything on this side just a little bit of pitting and that pitting again I'm gonna sand this down take this edge off of here where it's mushroomed out now I've got just a little bit of something here and as a matter of fact it was something stamped right there I don't know if you can see that or not 
right along here and that says might even say coal like company right there but whatever this is it's it's uh, uh it's gone beyond repair not my fault so I'm just gonna keep on going that that's good I don't mind a brand name that may brand named axe I just don't want to uh, you know what I mean I don't want to damage that all right so now I'm going to start working on this mushroomed edge a little bit and it doesn't have to be perfect again but if I'm gonna put it put it all together I, I at least want it to be nice so clean up this uh, this head back here a little bit but I was just looking and this isn't gonna stop me so don't worry um, this is just let me see becoming more and more discernible there at least a, it's definitely C C O like company and then the, the maker was here huh <clears throat> anyway so just to look at the condition here, you know, I just knocked some of the surface rust off this. Um, I don't want to clean it up and make it shine because it's going to be riding around in the toolbox of a pickup and that will just be prone to rusting. Um, I'm just going to do a little more cleaning up on the grinder. Maybe take a little bit more of this off. Yeah, it does have me curious, so I might see if I can clean that up with a square brush. Now, now what we're left with is this really nice patina, um, both sides. I got this a little shiny. I'm going to oil this, obviously. So, yeah, cleaned up nice. Got a good patina on there. A little bit of pitting. It, again, this being a truck axe, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I couldn't make anything else of that, of that mark there. Maybe O U L Co. And the rest is the rest is history, long gone, forgotten to the patinas of time, I guess. So that's pretty good on the head. I think I'm gonna uh, maybe get it a little more right there, get a little more top and bottom here, and then we'll be working on uh, the handle. All right, all right. So we'll call that good. I've got just, uh, I can't even remember where I got this <clears throat> handle here. But the first thing we'll do is try to see how close we are. <coughs> now, you want to, you can tell top and bottom on this because the, the bottom has a little bit of a, I guess, a little more angle they'd be called Hudson Bay style so this is our bottom and the bottom the eye at the bottom is just a little smaller than the eye at the top which which doesn't make sense when you're trying to put a handle on but once you get that that handle up in there and you flare it out at the top you'll sure be glad it is so I got some work to do on this uh, on this handle it looks like to get us rolling 
That's a, that's a 60 grit sand disc, which is a little aggressive, but um, it was brand new when we started here. Uh, it's a little worn down just from that, from working that steel, so we are awful close here. As a matter of fact, it'll start there, so. <clears throat> what I like to do is, is just take a rubber mallet, just tap it on there ever so gently. You know, we've got a long ways to go here, but, uh, <clears throat> let me see here. We can see if this will focus. Um, we're starting to get a little bit of wood shavings there, so it's a little tight there. A um, little bit right back here. So, if nothing else, we've exposed the areas that uh, are a little tight. <clears throat> Sand it up, just smooth it out more than anything. Hate to get a little wood curl keeping it. Sometimes you gotta do as much modding or more than this. Other times, boy, that head just slips right on there and you're in business. So it's kind of a crapshoot, but there we go. There it is. <clears throat> That's seated very nicely down there. Just flush, like I said at the top. <clears throat> okay. Now, to wedge it. Um, got a little wedge. I checked it, it's a little, I'll show you here. It's a little, short 
for that eye, and I don't know if you can see that. But I don't mind leaving a little a little gap um, front and back. That way when I pour linseed oil on it, in it, down the head, it can get down in there a little bit more. This is just a little plain old carpenter's wood glue. Put a little crack, I'll put a little on here. It's a little tight, so I'm not going to use a whole lot of glue. Get that centered. Okay. This is a piece of uh, maple, I believe it is. It's nice to... Um, that wedge, that will crack out so bad. One thing I like to do is just drop it on the floor straight across. Now you see I did I did end up cracking it here. <clears throat> That's not a big deal. That is not a big deal. But I am gonna All right, um, <clears throat> now, right now, I'm going to cut that off. Okay, got the wedge that glue is going to set up. Okay, this head is, is good. Now, uh, you can also use these in most handles, or that this Bowman handle didn't come with a wedge. This was a Bowman wedge. Here, that's why I think this handle may have been a Bowman, but I had to buy them separately if I recall. But uh, Now we can pound that in. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I am going to do that. <coughs> On some of the uh, some of the fancier axes that I do, I don't use a metal one. Just might look a little tacky. I put that in there at just a touch of an angle. Uh, I feel like it grabs more real estate that way <clears throat> than just 90 degrees. I went around it a little bit and I mushroomed it out just a touch and that's just one more safety precaution I do wish I do wish this was just a little bit longer and maybe that I don't know but that is that is perfectly acceptable now another thing I was going to tell you is uh, grain orientation on the bottom if you can see that um, you want the grain running uh, as close to parallel with the head as possible and you know off a few degrees this way or a few degrees this way isn't bad just probably not running this way otherwise the handle will have a tendency to <clears throat> split out over time so now we've got this I'm gonna grab some water and hit a touch of stone to this for a little bit uh, now with the grinder I did get this um, fairly close so it should be a quick process and that was my goal so let me get a little water and um, get right back here so what I'm doing is I had a burr on it from that grinder and I'm gonna go until <clears throat> the sanding lines out of it which They almost are. <clears throat> it's 
Check that. Sharp, it's just wet. <clears throat> That's very sharp, very sharp. So, <clears throat> this is going to be the good. Yeah, it's cutting pretty good. So, now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put a little linseed on this handle. Actually, now this is just a uh, uh, boiled linseed oil, and this stuff will <clears throat> cover better than that original. Uh, I'm bringing up the color, but cover better than that original uh, varnish or whatever it was that was on there. Put a little light coat on there for now. And what I'll do is I'll put a coat on here um, like uh, every day for the next week and let it soak in. Uh, and I guess the rule of thumb is <clears throat> a coat every day for a week, every week for a month, and then every month for the rest of the year, once a month for the rest of the year, and then once a year after that. So that's pretty easy if a guy can keep up with the initial coats, but <clears throat> yeah, boy, that really brings that wood grain out of it. So um, I like to do a little, like I said, that wedge in the top is a little sh short, just in the front, I guess. So I'm going to put a little on there, and it's all right to get it on the, on the steel too. Get it running down in there. Yeah. And, and this will uh, make an adequate oil for the head itself. Um, I don't like it much. I prefer like a mineral oil or something like that that um, doesn't get sticky, but this will get a little sticky on that head. But as long as it's already coated, especially those uh, open areas where I uh, ground it are so susceptible to <clears throat> rust at this point. Bouncing around in the back of a pickup year round. Um, it's going to be a. <clears throat> so, what I'm trying to do here is just get it down, pour it down all these little nooks and crannies around, around the back here, around the front. Get that all coated. Yeah. So, get it wiped off here best I can. <clears throat> Now this, this is off uh, another axe I've got here, but um, I'm going to put it on here. <clears throat> Just a leather um, heritage leather company. I got this on Amazon. Uh, it's a good fit. Snaps are good. And I, I've been mink oiling this. I've probably had it a year and a half, multiple coats of mink oil on it. It's nice and soft, pliable. So. There it is, <clears throat> truck axe. Um, now I got this boiled linseed on this, but that, that should be all right for leather too. There it is, three and a half pound head, my new truck axe.